right to remain silent. And just saying, you know, I, I just have my right to remain silent. Just we, we feel weird. It's almost like exercising our rights is this uncomfortable situation that we have to get more comfortable with. And the more we do it on a regular basis, the more we're going to get comfortable with it. No. So uh, I want to pose this. I gave this presentation, this exact one you're about to hear uh, in Wisconsin some months back. It read, went over really well. So I'm going to give it to you here and tell you a little bit about that presentation as I do it because I have some props at that presentation, which I don't have at this presentation. But telling you about that presentation is going to substitute for the props I don't have. All right, so here we go. So this is, this is an imagination scenario that we're going to talk about. And then there's going to be an analogy at the end of it. And if you can get this analogy, I'm telling you, you're not going to, you didn't come here in vain today. All right? So I'm very health conscious. How much time have we got this? Plenty? All right. I'm very health conscious on how I eat, how I live my life. I understand that health is a lifestyle. All right? And um, this is, uh, about a year ago, I, uh, I started experiencing some pain in my chest. And uh, I ignored it because I, I don't go to doctors. I'm like really, I'm just like anti-medical profession, as you probably heard. So, uh, so I just went about my life and ate healthy. The pain kept coming back and back to the point where I said, well, maybe I should just see what they have to say. So I went to a doctor and they did a scan of my chest and they found that uh, two of my arteries were clogged, 85%. And so the doctor, uh, the doctor, you know, wants to do surgery and drugs and medication and blood thinners and all that stuff. I'm like, not me, dude. I don't do medication, no way. So we're going back and forth in this office for about an hour. And finally we get to the point, I say, look, I'm not going to do this medical intervention. Give me something natural I can do. How can I, you know, repair my health? And he said, uh, we'll go out and jog every morning. Jogging is good for cardiovascular health and for your arteries and so forth. So I said, okay. So I get back home. I have four children, all right? And anyone who's got three children or two children or one child or four children or more know that there's no time to go jogging every morning when you have four children. So, you know what's funny? Last time I went jogging, I went with the team or that. So, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking of jogging. So, so, I don't have the time to go jogging because I have four children. So, uh, but I'll tell you what, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a thinker and I know how to get things done. So, as I'm telling this story, the exact story you're hearing in the, the workshop in Wisconsin, someone's back, um, I ask everyone, um, has anyone ever held $50,000 in cash in their life? All one lump sum, have you ever held $50,000 in cash? And I say, if you have, raise your hand. So there's about 50 people there, two out of the 50 raise their hand. And I say, well, what would you do for $50,000 in cash? That's a lot of money. Would you be willing to trade one month of your labor in exchange for $50,000 in cash. And I'm talking about 40 hours a week, nine to five, five days a week for one month, doing something that you feel ethically good about. And I said, who'd be willing to do that? And everyone says, yeah, me, me, me. And so I say, now you guys think I'm full of it, but I'm gonna tell you flat out, someone here today is gonna leave with $50,000 in cash. Someone's gonna leave, and they're all like throwing out gold and people are like, this guy, what's he talking about? So I go in my briefcase and I pull out the $50,000 in cash to show them that I'm serious, which was really $1,200. It was just a bunch of singles with $200 bills on the outside. But the prop served its purpose. So now I got everyone's attention, and everyone's smiling like this guy, and eyes are real big. And, 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 and so anyway, I say, well, well, here's the scenario. And I tell them the story about my health with the story I just told you. And so now I say, well, I don't have time to go jogging every morning. But anyone who will go jogging for me and let their jogging, let their jogging somehow apply to my health, that I get to reap the benefits of their jogging, I will pay them $50,000 in cash. And they can walk away with the money. And the room went silent. And I said, where did everybody go? Everyone was raising their two hands at a time. Some people were raising two hands that they'd be willing to trade one month of their labor for $50,000 in cash. And now the room is quiet. And I didn't understand why. And so I use that analogy because I grew up sick. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was 10 years old. I suffered most of my life in chronic pain every day. And I took charge of my health 
when I realized that my health was my responsibility and that I was the only one, not my Indian chief, not my doctor, not my priest, I was the only one whose efforts could directly relate to my health. I, if, if I needed to go jogging, I was the only one that could do the jogging. And it's interesting when I got in, uh, into this uh, rights and freedom movement, whatever you want to call it, is that that same thing applies. You are the only one that can exercise your rights. I cannot exercise them for you. You have to do the jogging. You have to do the jogging. We all have to do the jogging. I cannot exercise your rights for you. You're the only one that can exercise them. So your rights better be very personal to you in many ways. Because if you don't exercise them, they're just a good idea. They do not exist until we bring them to bear fruit in the manifestation of this tangible world that we live in. Until you exercise the right, where is it? Where is the right? I don't know. That's where it is, it's right there. And we need to start exercising our rights. And we're not gonna do that until we start understanding them. We will not do something that we just like, if we happen to exercise it, it'll be by dumb luck. It wasn't a conscious choice. So we need to understand rights, where they come from, how they apply, and start exercising them. And that's why freedom does not exist in America. It's because people are not exercising their rights. Out of ignorance, out of fear, out of whatever you want to call it. But as soon as we start exercising in a peaceful, non-compliant way, let me tell you, what did Gandhi say? The most powerful force in the universe. What, what is that called? Wow, the greatest force. Peace, the most force. Not by yeah. The greatest force. Yeah. So um, I hope you can think about that analogy, not just now, not just during the break, but when you get home tonight. And tell that story to other people about the guy who was sick and try to hire people to jog for him. That, that story is fraudulent. It's a joke. My heart's fine. I, I thought, you know, I did this, this show so good last time that people were concerned I was sick and this said, oh, I thought, you know, you should tell people it's not true. And I, I thought I did that. Did I do that or not? Yeah. I didn't. 